Hey everyone, I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at these two diesel heaters. Because while they do look very similar, they are both briefcase style diesel heaters, all in one units, uh, they are very, very different. What we have here is uh, the briefcase style heater from H Calorie. It is a five kilowatt diesel heater and is, I mean, it's, it, it's a very good and unique design amongst the Chinese diesel heater um, offerings. I, I, when it, of, of all the Chinese diesel heaters that I've owned, uh, this one is my favorite. And I do, I, I do like its all-in-one briefcase style design. This one is a two kilowatt diesel heater from a company called Planar. Um, if you're not familiar with Planar, they are actually a Canadian-based company. Uh, they also go by the name Autoterm uh, for, for some of their heaters and stuff. Uh, but the, the all-in-one briefcase style like this is, is a Planar heater. And it, uh, I mean, they're, they're very similar. Um, and, and we'll get into that. Uh, full disclosure, uh, both companies did send me these. Uh, H-Calorie reached out to me. Uh, back in November, December, and wanted me to wanted to, to send this to me and have me check it out. Like I said, very much like it. And then my friend Chad Boyd over at Overland Addict, uh, he saw me, you know, reviewing the different diesel heaters and stuff, and he said, "Hey, I, I want you to check out the Planar heater. Um, it's it, it's kind of on a different level, and I want you to see. I, I, I want to get your feedback. I want to I want to see what you think." And so he did, and. Um, Man, yeah, this this is a different animal than than this. Um, like I said, they look very similar. Um, they they're both briefcase style. Pretty much everything is contained inside the case. Um, they both have fuel tanks on the back. I do want to note uh, this one. This is not the fuel tank that came with the H calorie. Uh, this is a 10 liter tank that I got in another kit, and it just happened to fit. So. It comes with a five liter tank, but I took the five liter tank off and put the 10 liter tank on just so I can have twice as much fuel. Uh, Cause more fuel, more better, right? Um, so very, you know, very, very similar. Uh, intake hose is here. Controller on the H calorie is here. Uh, you do see this, the fuel line does run here. Um, exhaust here, air output here. Um, that's uh, pretty much it. The, the planar, very similar um, fuel tank also on the back, uh, five liter capacity here, uh, air intake here, uh, exhaust routes here, nice and, and padded and, and wrapped. Uh, output is here on, on this side. And you may notice where's the controller on, on this one. Uh, I'll get to that. Uh, but I mean, from the looks, they are very, very similar. One major difference between these two, the H calorie. Uh, right now, at the time of this recording, the H calorie can be had for a hundred and fifty nine ninety nine, so hundred and sixty bucks for the H calorie. I mean, that's that's very inexpensive for a diesel heater. The planar heater it comes in at one thousand three hundred. And $69, so $1,370, almost $1,400 for the planar heater versus $160 for the H calorie. Now, that obviously begs the question, what in the world? So let, let's get into it. And really what it comes down to is a key difference in quality. Uh, quality, and I will, I'll go ahead and throw in support. Uh, between these two. The H calorie, um, I mean, it is, it, it, it's a Chinese diesel heater. And if you, if you know anything about Chinese diesel heaters, that they are knockoffs of, you know, the more famous Wabastos, uh, the auto terms uh, fit into that. Um, they're a cheap knockoff of the higher end brands. And so you, you get that quality or lack thereof. Uh, as you can see, the, the the case on this, and you fold that down, and it uh, it does. It, you can you know keep your your power cord in there. Um, I, I you can keep the muffler in there. Uh, there's the heat exchanger. You got your fuel pump and your lines and your inputs, you know, and outputs and stuff here. 
Um, the, the material on this case is, I mean, it's, it's very flimsy. It gets the job done, but it's very, very fl flimsy. Um, uh, the construction on the parts inside, this is just that uh, inexpensive cardboardish uh, lined tube here. Fuel pumps are loud um, and unknown quality. Uh, the exhaust, pretty standard here. Um, but uh, the, the controller on here, you know, what the, the thing, if you start looking up Chinese diesel heaters on Amazon, you will quickly see that they're all kind of the same. Um, they've all got very similar or some exact same controllers. This one actually is starting to, the, the screen on this is starting to peel off. It does come with a remote. Uh, this does have Bluetooth capability with it, which is really nice. Um, but you know, this is the, has this little bracket here and this just kind of flops around. The air filter on this is, I mean, it keeps like dirt out of it. But I mean, overall, the, the, the quality, it's, it's very inexpensive and you can tell. Now, when you take a look at the planar heater, um, first of all, its case is, it's planar's version of a, a Pelican case. It is very high quality, very solid latches, very thick plastic. It's not real thin and flimsy like this. Um, nice hinges. You can see uh, the cords all fit down in here. I've got the hose in here. This one uses a bigger diameter hose. You can fit the, the hose in the bottom of this, but it, for the length and stuff and that diameter, it, it's a little more challenging. Um, but I, I do fit my hose up in here. Take that out so you can see it. Uh, two kilowatt heat exchanger here. I mean, you can see the, the size difference. And this isn't a, a video about the two different sizes because this comes in a four kilowatt as well. I think this one only comes in a five kilowatt, but this does come in the bigger four kilowatt. So you can get this in this size. This just happens to be what I have. Um, and you can see, I mean, the quality of just all the components is just, you can just look and tell that they are solid. The fuel pump is just really fixed in there, nice and solid. Um, when you hear the two side by side, this is a much quieter fuel pump. The components on the back side here, uh, the air intake here, much firmer mount. Uh, much better hoses and, and filter option up here. The fuel tank is very firmly mounted with a metal bracket to the front and the bottom. This fuel tank is not going anywhere. Take a look at how this one mounts. It's just a couple screws and this bends and flexes around. Uh, it's just a quality thing. And then the exhaust also, I mean, this is mounted with very sturdy metal brackets. This is not going anywhere. Uh, this has, I don't know if it has a built-in muffler, but this with, with this pipe here is quite a bit quieter than this one uh, with the muffler attached. So uh, I'm not sure what's going on with this, but it works really well. And so you can see, I mean, the, the quality of the components is just so much nicer. Now, is it $1,200 nicer? Well, that's a question. Um, but uh, what you get, uh, like I said, th this is the cord that this one comes with. Uh, it did not have the, the 12 volt plug. I, I added that because it just comes with ring terminals. The cord that came with this also just came with ring terminals. Uh, but you can see it's a pretty standard, um, pretty standard power cord that plugs in to this little socket here on the back. Now this one, um, and it's, it's, you know, you get an okay length out of this cord. You get, I mean, it's, it's not bad. You, you get a, an, an okay length out of it. But this one is just, it's a lot beefier. Uh, I also, you know, it had ring terminals on it. I added the 12 volt plug. Uh, this has a very nice um, grommeted waterproof connection here that connects uh, right here on the back. Oops. 
uh, right, right here. And this is a very long cord that it, it's almost too long. It does have uh, fuses here, which is really nice. No fuses on that one. Um, but this is a, I mean, this is, I, don't, I mean, I've got it doubled up and it's still longer than, than that one. So you can put this heater, you know, if you've got a power source that's, you know, maybe in your vehicle and you're using this for a ground tent that's maybe, I don't know, you know, 10, 15 feet away, you can run the power to that no problem. And you can, you don't have to worry about um, how close you are to your, to your vehicle or your power source uh, with this cord. It is an exceptionally long cord. Now, the controller on the H calorie is, is here. And it is, you can take this off, and it comes out about six inches. That's, that right there is as far as you get, is, is about six inches on that cord. Um, both of these can operate at, uh, via, via thermostat, so you can kind of set a temperature and it will read the area and cycle on and off as needed. Uh, to do that, you would have to cut these wires, which there are one, two, three, going into it, and extend them for you to be able to use this in a, you know, as a thermostat-controlled uh, heater. Uh, so there's that. That's pretty much just fixed. Like I said, they, they do both use Bluetooth. This does come with a little remote here. Uh, because this doesn't go very far, and you can use the remote to, to power it. However, this one, this one has a very long power cord. So you can easily, you know, put this outside your tent or your trailer or whatever. Uh, I think this is longer than this is longer than the power cord is, and this plugs in right here um, on the back, right here, right, right, right there, and then you have your your controller. Uh, one thing to note, this this is the uh, LCD Bluetooth controller that uh, that is an option. It is another $160 to the price tag, so factor that in there. Uh, the controller that comes with this that I had when I first started using it is this little guy right here, which honestly I kind of like this controller. It's just very simple. It's got, uh, you can run it just in fan mode, you can run it in heater mode, and it just has a dial for the heat setting. And it's very simple to, to use. If there's an error by chance, uh, it's you know just a number of blinking lights and you can you know see what the error code is. Um, but I, I, honestly, it's just really simple. And and I, and I do like this one. And so far I have not had error messages on this to have to deal with. So there's that. Um, but it's just a, a nice, you know, nice simple control. And as long as this is, you can run this and just boom, drop it in your rooftop tent and have it there. Or, you know, mount this in your, your little trailer or whatever, because uh, these, these interchange. So this just unplugs and this plugs in. And, or you can go with this one. I like this one because it does have the Bluetooth capability in it. And so I like just leaving everything down, you know, uh, down on the bed of my Jeep or on a little table and just being able to control things from my phone once I'm in my tent or if I'm in my trailer and this is outside, that sort of thing. I like, I like the Bluetooth control. So that's why, uh, that's why I got this, this screen. Um, so the, the controller differences are significant. This is a very cheap very poorly to read display. Um, I almost don't even like using this other than to turn it on and off uh, because that I like using the app much better. Uh, another funny thing about the Chinese heaters, um, I've got three of these Chinese diesel heaters now that, uh, that are Bluetooth controlled. They all use the same app. That it's, <laughs> they're all using the exact same app. They all pretty much use the same controllers. So. I mean, ex with the exception of H calorie putting it in this little, you know, plastic briefcase style, that's the only thing that sets this apart than any other Chinese diesel heater. It's just the the format and the box that it comes in. Um, so th they're they're literally all the same, just under different brands, you know. So, um, but this one is is completely different, and it, it's it's a much higher quality, much better diesel heater. 
Some other uh, differences that I will note between them is the planar heater does have built-in altitude compensation. So as you go up in altitude, it will adjust you know, the mixture and the richness and all that sort of stuff of this to compensate for that altitude. Uh, this particular H calorie with the Bluetooth controller, it does not have that. Uh, apparently the cheaper version without the Bluetooth controller has that. So whatever, you know, because reasons, different controller, I guess the altitude compensation is built into the controller. Uh, the, this one, th this particular model does not have altitude compensation. So if you're going up in altitude, you know, into the Rockies, whatever, um, into the mountains, you know, especially above like 8,000 feet and above that, just note this has altitude compensation. And I would, you know, I would legit trust this um, to be able to do its job. I, I don't know if I'm going to trust this to, to do its job. Um, as far as output goes, like I said, this is a five kilowatt. This is a two kilowatt. So there is a difference in heat output, obviously. Um, but I was a little surprised from an actual heat standpoint, not very much, only like 30 degrees. This one was running at about 330 degrees output, you know, from the heat exchanger directly. This one was running right at 300. So not a big temperature difference, but this one does have a lot more airflow being pushed out. Uh, then this one does five kilowatt, two kilowatt. I would expect that. I mean, just look at the, just look at the output hoses, and obviously this is going to output more air than than this one does. So, uh, but again, this comes in a four kilowatt. So that's not really the point here. Just wanted to be aware how quiet these two are are very different. Um, this one uh, was real. This this one is so quiet. I've run a number of of Chinese diesel heaters from different brands over the last few years. And this one is so much quieter than all of them. You cannot hear the ticking of the fuel pump when this is all closed up. Um, all you hear is the fan and you know just the, the air blowing. And this came in at about 69 decibels. And this one without the muffler on it was pushing 80 decibels, 79 decibels. and with the muffler on it, what dropped it down to 72 decibels. Now, in the sound tests, I think, and this is personal opinion, everybody's you know, sound tolerances are different. I just think the noise from this one is much more pleasant. Um, it's, it's a lower noise, it's more like a more like a brown noise, almost I would compare it to the sound of you know, maybe a stream next to you. Um, my wife and I both sleep with you know, brown noise going, uh, playing on the speaker in our bedroom. It, it sounds a lot like this. This is a higher pitch and I find it more annoying and you can hear the ticking of the, um, of the fuel pump in this one. So you get that tick, 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 and depending on how high you have it. I did both the tests on these just, you know, maxed out on high because I wanted to see their max output. Um, but this thing was just like tick, 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 and you could hear it. This one, you, you could barely hear it. So um, that that may be of significance to you. But I, I think it's just a higher quality fuel pump in this compared to this one and a, a better quality case compared to this one as well. Now, again, on the whole quality control thing, um, in, in trying to test these this morning, uh, I could not get the H calorie to run off my power station. Uh, it just, it just wouldn't do it this morning. I, I've had it run off power stations in the past, uh, but this morning I, it would not run off power station. I tried it five different times. It kept, uh, tripping the voltage on the power station and it just wasn't happening. So I had to move it to my Jeep that's wired directly to the battery and test this there. This one I did get to run off my Blue Eddy power station um, and it ran great. And I've run this one several times um, off of the Blue Eddy power stations uh, on actual trips. And it's, it, it, it does really well. Now, is that a guarantee that it's gonna work on all power stations? No, because all power stations vary just a little bit, but it did work on the little Blue Eddy that I was running off of and I could not get this one to, to run off either power station. Now, let's, uh, let, let's take a look because I think the big, biggest deal 
is, is going to be in support and warranty. So I am taking a look here at uh, H Calories contact info and support info. Uh, I cannot find anything on H Calories website. I can't find anything in the manual. I can't find anything on Amazon that says this has any kind of warranty other than the Amazon 30 day warranty. So 30 day money back guarantee warranty on the H calorie. Um, there's no warranty information on their website. And if you try to go to their contact us, uh, they say the best way to reach them is through email and their phone number. They do list their phone number on their website, but it is in Hong Kong, China. So. Uh, if you have an issue with the H calorie and you need support, good luck because you're not going to get anyone on the phone calling China and who knows how long it's going to take them to respond to your email and diagnosing a diesel heater via email, not going to be the simplest solution. I'm guessing what will happen is, uh, like I said, I don't, there's no warranty information listed, but if it's within, the, within a reasonable amount of time, they'll probably just send you a new one. Uh, because I, I really think that the Chinese diesel heaters, they're bottom line disposable. I mean, they're so cheap that if something goes wrong with this, you're probably better off and probably going to be much faster just pitching it and buying a new one and seeing how long it lasts. Uh, the Planar. Now, if I go to Planar's website and look up the warranty policy on it, uh, they are good for 24 months. Uh, a 24 month warranty on their air heaters, uh, you know, as long as they're purchased from an authorized dealer like Chad at Overland Attic. And, um, you know, they will ship you out free parts to help fix it. And most importantly, uh, when you go to their contact us page, uh, they are in British Columbia, Canada, which means we can just call them. So, very easy. Not only can you find the warranty information, two years, you can also easily contact their support number and get, get, get someone that, that knows what they're doing uh, on the phone to, to help you figure out any issues that you had. So, what it boils down for, for me on whether or not, you know, the Planar is worth $1,200 more than the H Calorie comes down to your personal preference and how often you're out. You know, if you are, you know, just going out on the weekends and fairly cold weather, you know, if something goes wrong, you can just pack up and bail and run home because you're only, you know, just a little bit, you know, not, not far away from home, uh, then something like this may work absolutely perfect for you. And if it doesn't, you know, you can trash it, buy a new one, See how many times it takes you to get lucky to get one that, that works. Uh, I have been very lucky with this one with the exception of the power station issue uh, that I've had with it uh, plugged into my Jeep. It's worked really, really well. Um, and I've used it on multiple trips. Uh, but if you depend on your diesel, if you're going out and it's really, really cold, like I have used this one you know, down to single digit temps at night and if you are going out often and far from home on longer expeditions, Karen and I just got, we're in Arkansas, Karen and I just got back from a trip to Arizona uh, where we were out in the desert for five days and took this one. I mean, there was no contest in which one of these two I was gonna take because uh, I, this was the one that I just, I just trusted. So this is the one that I, I took with me because and it lived in the back of the Gladiator, it went on all the trails, it had all the dust, which is why this looks the way that it does, um, and it just lasted. All the brackets I knew were gonna hold up, things weren't gonna flop around and potentially break off. I, I just trusted this one more. So, again, it, it comes back to your personal preferences, your use cases, how long you're gonna be out, budget, obviously. Um, do you want something that is lesser quality and honestly more disposable or do you want something that is higher quality has warranty has support and if something goes wrong you can you know be able to fix it instead of just pitching it and 
buy a new one and hope for the best. So that's really what it comes down to. Uh, personal preference, budget, um, how often you're going to be out. And, you know, I, I'll let you make that call. I, I do think there's a place for both. Obviously, I mean, this one served me well, but this one's going to serve me better moving forward because I, I, I trust this one. I, I, it's just so much better made uh, than the, the, the Chinese diesel heaters. Uh, so there you go. Uh, let, me, let me point out, you know, like I said, this is something you buy at a, a local Overland store. If you want to see one of these in person and actually check them out, get hands on, ask questions about it, you know, Chad, Overland Addict, you can pick up the phone and call him. He knows way more about these than I do. Uh, he will actually help you out, answer your questions. They actually, Overland Attic actually makes some, some cool accessories for this. Different power uh, plugs that just plug right into the outlets. So you don't have to splice and do any wiring or anything yourself. Um, some ducting work and stuff like that. Uh, Chad actually sells and makes some of that stuff himself. Uh, but if you want to get hands-on with, you know, with one of these, uh, the date of this recording is, is mid-February. Uh, in just two months, or depending on when you're, you're watching this, mid-April is the Moore Expo in Springfield, Missouri. It's right in the middle of the U.S., so no matter where you are, it's going to be easy to get to. Um, it is a fantastic overland and off-road expo, and this year they're adding in power sports, so side-by-sides, motorcycles, ATVs, um, probably watercraft too, I'm not sure. Um, but they're having a whole power sports wing as well. going to be really cool. Um, but if you want to get hands-on and actually see one of these in person and, and talk to a real live human being about this, come to the War Expo. Chad's going to be there. Guarantee he'll have uh, quite a few planar heaters, heaters there to demo and sell uh, at that event. So come to the More Expo. Link is in the description. 10% discount also in the description to save you money on your tickets, which includes you know, if you're just showing, for, showing up for a day, if, you're just, if you want to show up for the weekend, uh, and not camp if you want to camp, if you want the whole VIP experience, 10% um, off all your options there uh, for that. We will be there. Um, rigs will be on display. Uh, I'll be teaching Gaia GPS classes um, and probably chatting with Chad for a little bit too because he's got a lot of other cool stuff than just the diesel heaters. Uh, so be sure and check that out. But let me know in the comments what, what you think is, for your use case, is this high-end diesel heater worth it over the, the Chinese diesel heaters? Uh, let me know in the comments um, what, what, what you think and your experience. You know, have, you, uh, have you had one of these and it's, yeah, it's, it's been running great for five years um, or, or it's not, it, it failed you or whatever. Do you have any experience with the higher ends? Um, like, like the Planar, well, Bosto is another brand. They don't make a portable version. They're, more for vans and RVs and that sort of thing. Um, I, Planar is the only one that I know of that makes a high-end portable diesel heater. I may be wrong. Just, well, I, I don't know. Uh, but let me know in the comments of, of your experience. And if you would, give the video a like, subscribe, give us that YouTube love. Uh, check out the Patreon link in the description if you like what we're doing and you want to consider supporting the channel, gain access to special events, special content that we put out there all of our GPS data from our trips, uh, that link's in the description. And for all of our merchandise, uh, hoodies, hats, t-shirts, uh, all kinds of cool things, patches, stickers, go to shopoverlandapparel.com. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time, bye.